Thanks for joining us on the Talking Leadership TV podcast series. Our guest today is Isabel Popescu. Today's podcast was focused on developing leaders and entrepreneurs. Isabel migrated to Australia some 16 years ago with her family. She started to study an accounting qualification, started a cleaning business and door-to-door selling, but decided to follow her passions and started to study hairdressing, beauty and massage therapy, as well as barbering. She worked in a salon one day a week, but that drove her to be her own boss and in doing so she started her own hair and beauty salon in a relatively short space of time but in a two-year period she lost fifty thousand dollars isabel visited romania to be with her father who was unwell and after his passing it was her wake-up call to do something different with her life she started a personal development and coaching business which in the first year netted her a six-figure outcome she decided to study with a focus on the question what made makes some people more successful than others in their businesses, their relationships and their lives. She became a neuro-linguistic programmer, a hypnosis trainer, master coach and timeline therapy practitioner. This was a really interesting conversation with Isabel. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. But as always, enough from me. I will hand over to today's guest, Isabel Popescu. Good morning, Isabel. Thank you for joining me on the podcast today, mate. Good morning, Eric, Dr. Eric. I'm so happy to meet you invited me today oh thank you yeah eric is fine isabel thank you look um we talked a little offline around what we were going to discuss today and we're going to be looking at the topic of uh developing leaders and entrepreneurs so from uh a starting point the one-on-one on this is why do you think it's important to develop our leaders and entrepreneurs just in in broad terms um you know, when you start a business, uh, when people start a bit, when I started the business, I I started with um, I want I was before a entrepreneur, yeah. Before, I wanted I had something I had a dream I had a, a, a passion and I wanted to become an entrepreneur, but this is this is not this is not enough because I started my business and. Uh, 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 I started my business and it was like, yeah, I'm going to do it. doesn't matter. I know, I don't know. I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, and, and the intention is to help people. Everyone, when they start the business, they, their intention is to, to help someone. And of course, um, not being a, a charitable company, you want to make money as well. The thing is that if you don't know how to lead your team, if you don't know how to lead in a business, the customers are not going to come. So it's not enough that you have the will, that you have the passion, that you have the, the whatever to, to start the business. If you are not a leader, no one is going to be around you. Yeah, that, that's an interesting response. I guess it, it, there's a two part of there for me. You talk about the why you want to become an entrepreneur and a leader and to make sure that those skill sets are there um, to go forward. So I guess the next question in my mind would be um, from, let's look at this from the leader perspective, what are those things that leaders need that you see are still challenges for them to get their head across? So recently I spoke to someone who said being a good communicator was one issue for them. So from your experience What's the key challenge facing a leader versus an entrepreneur in the in the current business environment that you've seen? So I think there are a few levels of leadership, and uh, everyone starts with level one, <laughs> with level one that is, uh, you know, I have the position. Then, if I have the position, I have the title. Everyone is going to come to me. Yes, everyone is going to recognize me, and it's not like that. Uh, because people are not going to like you or follow you because you are just the leader, whatever is going to be that leader. Um, then uh, it's the level two. When people like you, your team like you, or your customers like you as a leader, um, because you build some, they come because they like you, you build some uh, relationship, some report, you are good at this thing but still it's not enough, then it's the following level. 
So this is how I see I see myself. This is uh, where the things that I went through along my my uh, uh, business and as a leader in my business. Uh, I started with uh, just because I am a leader, everyone should come to me and everyone should do business with me and. And it wasn't like that. Then I started the next one to build a relationship, and people started to like me because I, um, I created, I com- was able to communicate and to create rapport and create build that relationship. But then is the delivering the results because nothing is going to happen if you just like each other, if you trust each other, <laughs> and do nothing. So. Um, Yes, delivering the results is the next one. Do you think you had, um, at the time of, of starting the businesses that you started, do you think you had the leadership chops to do what you needed to do versus being the entrepreneur in that situation? Because of a lot of conversations I've had previous to um, this conversation with entrepreneurs in particular is, they've been very clear that they were never really good at the organizing and leading at the operational level, but they had the ideas and sort of led the business in that sense. So they knew what they didn't know and they brought in the skill sets that they needed. And some have said to me they could do both, but it was just a tension of how much time do you put into the business versus how much time do you put growing the business and being slightly apart from it and letting someone else run with it. So um, from from your experience, did you have that tension or was it always the intention for you to be a bit of both? It was always that they were both to be the leader and to be entrepreneur. I couldn't I couldn't separate them. So I don't think that you can separate them. I yeah, sure. And that, that's that's an interesting argument. Some would argue that they're they are completely distinct. Um I I don't know which camp I fall into, actually, because I, I I would not be so arrogant to think that I had for myself the answer. If for you it worked to be both, more power to you for being able to do that. But I think there are some some of the humans amongst us that realise that they're not good at something and so they'll buy that skill set in. If, if you went in with the mindset that you could do both, uh, again, that's a skill set that not a lot of people have. I, I guess my question would be, as your businesses have grown, have you had to let go of some of the operational side and let someone else come in and help you or have you maintained that connection to the business at all levels? Back in the days, um, um, I worked as an accountant and uh, I managed the accounting department in a governmental institution um so i saw that i have all the skills because along the years you built it so the leadership you don't you are not born with the leadership no one is going to give you hey eric welcome in this world here is your bag with the leadership uh, knowledge this is something that everyone uh, builds if they want and i i think it's not like you are good at this or good at that what do you want to be good at? Because everything can be, we are born blank. And we built along the way whatever we need. So I, in my opinion, I consider that uh, um, whoever says that I'm not good at that, I'm going to do this, maybe they don't want to put, in, put enough effort. And they choose just one side. I was always thought, I was uh, raised that um, it's very important to learn more than one thing, to be good at more than one thing, because you never know when you're going to need it. So since I was a child, I was good at a lot of things. This is how I was raised, and this is how are my brothers, and my sisters. We, we, are, we were raised like that. From our father taught, that, uh, taught uh, us this. So as I said, I was uh, managing the, the accounting department, and I thought that if I have that knowledge, if I have the, the if I've done that, I'm going to be great in my business as a leader in a different country. 
I didn't take in consideration that it's a different country, different environment, different everything. So um, um, I struggled. I struggled because it's, a, it, it's, it's, it's quite a difference between having your own business and being the leader for someone else. Yeah. Okay. And that that's that's that discussion piece around uh, you being the entrepreneur and owning the business versus then having to run the business. So as as time has gone on and your business has matured, do you still see your role as as being able to master everything you need to master to run the thing, or have you outsourced? some of the uh, the delivery of what you need to do in the business to somebody else is it have you let go in that sense and why i ask this is that um another topic that gets brought up quite a lot is to what degree can the entrepreneur let go of the baby the business and let somebody else run it for them so they can do something else are you at that point are you happy to stay in the business that you've built and just keep growing that particular business like I, I don't know where you are in that cycle so it's just of, of interest to me where you think things are at so i did also some of them some of the things but i still want to to um to be there it's still my business kind of and i still want to be part of it not just to um supervise from from the outside i, I really love what i do maybe this is one of the reasons that I still want to be very, very, very much into the business. I love what I do. It's like for me coming to to work, it's, uh, it's like a holiday. <laughs> so I, I like what I do and it's like, would you, you know, when you like too much something, would you say, hey, I don't want that anymore? Yeah, sure. That, that's an, that's an interesting point. Um, the, the passion for what it is that you do and it's um again you're lucky that you found something that you're that passionate about but um there there's obviously there's other schools of thought that um the passion project is one thing but doing other things and building your career in other ways is also another trait of the entrepreneur and it sounds in your case and again more power to you for doing something that you love to do that you don't potentially consider as work, but it, it's it's a calling of sorts. Is at at some point have you had the discussion in your own mind, or at least with others around what else can you do with this business? Can you grow? Like, is that conversation that you've been having, or are you happy to stay at the size that you're at? Like, this is this territory is fairly new for me, and that I've never asked a previous guest. Well, have you thought about? growth is it maintaining what you've got like where where do you think you're at so yes i was thinking about growth um in the last few months i was thinking about this about growing it and i already started to do the plan how to do it i will need to outsource more than than uh, i've done up to this moment and i'm going to do that at the right moment not now uh so yes I would like to grow, um, and this is what is the next step in my in my business. It's a good place to be, by the sound of it. You look you look exceedingly happy that you're that you've gotten there. So to round back up into the discussion around um, developing the leader. So when you had that that thought, okay, I'm going to grow the business. Did you give any thought to what other skill sets you need to learn or what other things you need to improve to get there? Or is it um, if you didn't have those skill sets or didn't want to um, extend yourself in that way that, yeah, you finally made a decision to bring in some talent that can do that bit of the work for you, which takes a bit of stress off you? Like what what, what did that conversation look like? I believe so that with the knowledge that I have, I, so I have everything that I need to to do this uh, to um, outsource to bring new talents. I have that. Uh, I know how to do, it and I, I I have to decide when I'm going to do this. 
It's just a matter of decision. And I know that taking a decision is just one second. Uh, but I postponed that second more to to be ready to. Because it's like, you know, when you think that you have kids, yes? Yes. You have kids. So yeah. you saw your child when it was a few minutes. Yes, you saw it when it was born and you started to that love in that moment. Yes, and then you saw your child growing and growing and growing and growing till, you know, they become adults. They become teenagers and uh, you still want to keep them near you and they are older and you still want to have them near you. And even if when you let them go, you still are there for them. You are still the leader, you know, they still come to you. So it's the same, it's the same thing in a business. When you build a business, the business is your baby. So the business, my business is my baby. And it started, of course, it's like any baby, you know, there are not all the time nice things that happen. <laughs> yeah, and you face different things, but still it's my baby. So even if I'm going to outsource things and I'm going to bring a lot of other people here, I'm still going to be uh, the leader. You know, it's it's still my business. Till the moment I, when I decide to sell it and it's not going to be mine, um, I'm still going to be a very important part of, of my business. Yeah, it, it does sound like that connection is... Uh, incredibly important to you. So let me take your mind back, if I can, Isabel, to uh, COVID. Now, I don't want to talk about all the ins and outs of COVID because that's been done to death, but let, let's look at this more in a, in a post-COVID world and you being in that world uh, from a business sense. What did you learn as a leader post COVID, what, what was the thing that you took away or things that you took away from that process from a leader point of view? You know, you wouldn't believe during the COVID I ended up in the hospital. Uh, I was so stressed that having a physical business you know, and not being able to do it, it's like everything is gone. And I was so stressed and I was so... Uh, I, I was saying to myself, I don't want to feel anything. I don't want this, like, I want everything to disappear. So I kept saying this kind of thing in my mind because I was so stressed that one morning I woke up and I couldn't walk. And uh, yes, I couldn't walk. My husband and my son would help me to move around. I couldn't eat. I couldn't drink. I would vomit. And so I ended up in the hospital. Everyone thought that it's this, that, that. I've done plenty of tests and they discover nothing. I realized one night that uh, it's my mind. It's my mind that kept saying to myself, I don't want this, I don't want that, I want everything to disappear. Because in those days, everything disappeared. I didn't care about the business, I didn't care about nothing. Yes, nothing else was in my mind than to find a way to be able to to walk, to walk, to eat, to drink, to go back to my family. So that was a, a very big moment for me. I realized that whatever I put in my mind, my mind is going to uh, to listen and give me what I want. Um, yeah, sure. Look, um, I... I'm grateful that you shared that. I'm sorry that you ended up in hospital from what sounds like stress. I'm I'm, I'm not a doctor, so I'm, uh, this is a layman's view of this, given what you've just said. I I can empathise with you. I think sometimes we take things to that, uh, what's that, catastrophic thinking, and it has an impact on your body. Now, you, no one could say that you didn't, have good cause for doing that given that your the nature of your work required to be in touch with the other human beings and when things were being locked down you couldn't do that so i, I can i can understand it I, I guess the lesson um if i'm hearing you right is about understanding some some of your own mental health um 
maintenance and, and good positive thinking to keep you f- from getting to that necessarily that point because if you can't keep down food and you end up hospitalized for a week and there's nothing physically wrong with you then it's 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 how do you deal with that level of stress and i would suggest to you again without numbers here that this probably happened more than what people are letting on during covid um particularly in industries where you need to be out with other people i lucked out in that i've I've been working from home for the last 10 years and through covid i was still working from home so all of the all of the media around hey you got to work from home now and it's going to be different like oh shit i've been doing this for 10 years this is no different for me it, it's just another day in the job but for others um and this is this is my this is in detriment to myself and a bit of selfishness in my own mind i didn't at the time i do now but not at the time i didn't really give a lot of thought to how is this impacting on people's mental health through this and particularly leaders so as the leader of a business in uh entrepreneur starting your own business and not being able to work in that for any length of time or not knowing what the next month was going to bring would have been bloody stressful i, I, can, I can completely understand what so in, in to get yourself back into the groove of working what did you need to do mentally t- to get yourself back into a more positive frame and this is this is good advice for any leader watching this so what did you do to help yourself out of that funk you know that one i i thank the universe for that thing that happened to me you know <laughs> because i i i that made me start something else so the fact that i wasn't able to <laughs> that i went in the hospital that i couldn't do the physical work, the fact that I was raised by, hey, you need to know many other things, not just one, because you never know when you start it, <laughs> when you're going to need it, uh, made me understand that uh, it's time to uh, start something else, because you never know when the physical world is going to collapse, <laughs> and it's important to do something else. Um so um, um, maybe you remember from our conversation that I, I am a trainer in neuro-linguistic programming and uh, instructor in hypnotherapy and uh, trainer in a few other alternative um, um, things, therapies. So that was the moment when I started to apply the things that I knew from that, the things that I've learned just for myself at the start because I wanted to know myself. But that was the moment when I realized that, hey, it's the moment to apply what I've learned. And uh, I realized that it's not enough to just say, I'm healthy, I'm healthy, I'm healthy. And uh, imagining that by saying that everything is going to change. It's not enough. There are a lot of any other things that uh, they are important to know when you say I'm healthy, I'm healthy, I'm healthy. Because if you if you say I'm healthy and you don't believe it, it's not going to happen anything. No, no, hundred uh, percent. I, it it it's nice to hear that out of some adversity for yourself, something better or something different came along. I, I'm if I'm hearing you correctly, um, having multiple uh skill sets in your leadership tool bag if we're going to look at that is critical to do other things so i'm I'm hearing you on that front so um and again because i I know you do the the neuro neuro linguistic programming and, and you've met some people in your your travels what and this this is crystal ball gazing here so i'm, I'm not necessarily after a right answer because i don't think there is one but what do you see in the business world, let's say in the next 12 months that you think is a challenge for either leaders or entrepreneurs that's coming that people might not necessarily be focusing on? So what I noticed is that um, most of the leaders, they apply the things that they know, yes? They they are the rules. They are the uh, step one, step two, step three, and this is what you need to do to be a better leader or to be the great leader without taking in consideration the mind factor, without understanding that everyone has a model of the world. And when you are a leader and you want to send your message 
out there and uh, you, you imagine that everyone thinks like is going to think like you and uh, your model of, of the world is just the way the world has to be then um, it's going to be a very big gap in the connection this is what i noticed that the, the mind and this is the thing that i've learned through my nlp and that helped me in my leadership uh, uh, journey as well um to be able to understand the other person and i'm not saying that being empathic is enough is not enough to be empathic is to the moment you start talking with people around you but as a leader you have to know the that your team you have to know your team you have to know your customers and when you start talking to them and if you as a leader in five in two, three minutes, you understand the other person of the world, uh, the other person model of the world, then you uh, straight away, you know how to communicate with the other person. And when you know that in your, in your, in your team, they are all of the people, they think in a different way, and you are able to, to communicate with them in, in their language, then uh, uh, you are on top of the game. Yeah, that um, God, we could unpack that forever. The the knowledge of self, sort of self leadership, understanding you before you engage with others that that makes a lot of sense to me. But um, I, I guess the the extension to the question that I asked around what might be coming is: is this something that leaders can do to prep themselves? We, for understanding others as well as understanding self, is this is is this something that leaders need to get trained on? Is it something they could learn from others? How do you access that to develop yourself in a better way? Because the and why I ask this is, and I'm forever um, seeing this on LinkedIn. Is it going to a coach? Is it going to a trainer? Is it talking to your colleagues? Is it a combination of those things? What What's the best way? If you had to prep me, what would you say to me about prepping yourself to get a better mindset for engaging with work? What would your advice be? Uh, so, yes, this is a very, very good question. What would, If I would be to advise you, not advice, suggest, not advice. Um, suggest, advise, coach, mentor, whatever the word is, but what would you tell me about a uh, possible way forward, yeah. Yes, having a co coach is very, very important. Coach, mentor, whatever you want to name it. Having someone that uh, uh, know how to do it, it's very, it's vital. Um, I think that everyone reads books, everyone watches YouTube videos. It's so much information there that it's like, you know so many things that you don't know what direction to take. And it's important to have someone that uh, is able to uh, to draw the map that you need. Not to make a plan because, you know, the plan, you start making the plan and till you finish, you need to start making the plan again. So, but when you draw the map, you know exactly what are the steps that are going to take you at the end of the uh, the journey. You know where you are in this moment, and maybe you know, maybe you want to discover where you want to be. Uh, and between the where you are now and where you want to be, it's a bit of a gap that a coach, a trainer, a mentor can help you. And I found out the uh, NLP, for me, it was the way. When... Uh, so even if I had all of the, the other knowledges, the accounting business, they weren't enough because it was just the kind of the, the, you know, a business is like an iceberg. And what is the business is uh, what is at the, at the surface of the water. What is underneath is in fact the mind. And uh, the way you, the way you uh, have your mind is going to direct the way you, you are going to build your business or to build your leadership uh, or to build your life. 
and through neurolinguistic programming uh, uh, is the whatever is underneath the water. I was just uh, as you were talking, I was just thinking the analogy of the iceberg is quite a an interesting one because what a lot of times what people will see in your leadership practice is what's at the surface. That's quite interesting. I'll, I'll, I'll be thinking about that now that you brought that up because I hadn't really given that a lot of thought. And um, look, from from uh, given that you've shared something, for me, I, I have had a lot of informal mentors in my time. I draw on the skill sets of my colleagues, of board members that I've worked for to try and understand my own thinking. I might not agree with what they're saying. They definitely might not agree with what I say, but it's more to get all of that thinking in a bubble and then sort of start picking out the things that might work for me. But I've never I've never gone down the path of um, a coach or a trainer, not that I'm not saying I don't need it. It's just something that's not uh, in front of mind for my own practice. And as I get older, I'm thinking you know, maybe that that's an avenue that I'm going to go down the rabbit hole at one point to get someone who's completely uh, that level of objectivity when they don't know you, um, they've got no skin in the game other than to help you get your thinking clearer. That's a very different proposition to when you're talking to a friend, a colleague, a mentor in the same industry. There's a there's a personal connection there and they want success for you or for you to get over a, a whatever the issue is. Whereas a coach, trainer, uh, mentor that is not connected in that way, I think can keep you accountable in a very different way to someone that you might know. So I, I've never crossed that divide, but it, it's something worth um, considering. Look, um, Isabel, this has been really good. Thank you for your time. This has been great. Thank you very much, Eric. It was a pleasure. I loved and enjoyed it.